All right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, we back. We back with another reaction video. I think I'm getting tired of this every day. But, you know, you got to stay on it like an everyday job. You feel me? I feel like a, a telemarketer. <laughs> That's what I feel like, a telemarketer. But, uh, yeah, let's stay on this motherfucker, though, man. Let's get into another uh, reaction video with uh, Main Street Crips. Main Street Mafia Crips versus the Uber Criminal Crips in the other hoods. <laughs> the other hoods. Yeah, man, this is the war in Cali, man. But, uh... Yeah, we're going to do a couple of these wars in Cali. And, uh, see how it goes, man. But, uh, yeah, I'm still kind of sleep right now. But I knew you going to get on it, though. You feel me? Let's go. Uh, the Main Street Crips are from the east side of South Central. They have two clips. The A4 and 9-8 Main Street. The Main Streets have always been known for being one of the hoods in LA being about their money. OGs like Dell Dog had a record label and had good relationships with people like Shaq and Steve Harvey before he died. But outside of money and entertainment, that doesn't mean the Main Streets hadn't had their share of beefs. They had beef with some games like the East Coast Crips, the Mad Swan Bloods, and the Hoover Criminals, who they once had a good relationship with. In this episode, I'm going to detail some of the incidents the Main Streets have had with some of their rivals. June 17, 2006, Demandre walked outside a liquor store and seen his friend James from Main Street arguing with a Raymond at a crypt named Xavier. Xavier would pull out his gun and start shooting at Demandre and James. James would lose his life. Demandre would be shot, but he would survive. Xavier would hop in the car with other Raymond Ave Crip and drive away. They would later be pulled over and Xavier's gun was found and Xavier would be arrested. Demandre would identify Xavier as the shooter, but at trial, he would recant that statement. One of the Raymond Ave Crips would later tell him Xavier. He would say Xavier said, I hit them. I got at least three of the main streets. Even in jail, he was recording his cell talking to another person about how he shot up some Main Street. Xavier will later be sentenced to 99 years to life. January 28, 2007. Marlon and his girlfriend Jaquisha were walking near 115th in town. 11A East Coast Turf. Marlon would see a white Cadillac drive by with his headlights off. He would hear a car skirt, then he would be shot. Jacquees would see Marlon fall and run behind a car. Marlon would be paralyzed after the shooting. The Cadillac would drive by the police a few blocks away. Once the police seen the car, they blocked it off. The Cadillac would crash into the police car and the cops would arrest everyone in the car. In the car was Timothy and William, members from 98 Main Street. The police would find guns and gloves in the car. For the shooting, Timothy received 40 years to life, and William, he received 32 years to life. August 16, 2009, Charnay and Daquan were walking on 87th and Broadway. Daquan would be wearing an orange rag. He was from 94 Hoover. A man walked up on him and asked Daquan, where was he from? Daquan responded, 94 Hoover. The man's response was, oh, is that right? and pulled out his gun. Charnay and Daquan will run, but Daquan will be shot for a time. He will lose his life. A few witnesses will see a shooter jump into a white car, and they will get a police description of the car and the shooter. Charnay will pick the shooter out of a photo lineup a few days later. Same day of the shooter, the car will be found in Main Street's turf. The shooter fingerprints will be found in the car and the shooter was determined to be a man named Christopher from Main Street. He'll be arrested 12 days later on August 28th. 
Christopher was sentenced to 50 years to life for this crime. November 25th, 2013, Jared picked up his girlfriend, Angela, and they were driving to get food. Jared will stop his car at a light on Hoover and Century. Our dark SUV will pull up on the side of him. The SUV would try to get Jared's attention by yelling and screaming. Jared would speed off, trying to avoid the people in the SUV. Jared would stop by the light a few blocks up. The SUV would catch up, and the man would exit the SUV. The man exits the SUV would shoot up Jared's car. Jared would lose his life. Angela would be shot, but she survived. A witness would take down the license plate and give it to the police. The next day, November 26, 2013, Kenneth and Andre would be pulled over in the SUV and took to jail. An informant would come forth and say he was from 9 for Hoover. The informant would say they would see Jared Carr and knew he was from 9-8 Main Street. The informant said he would be asked to be let off the car because he knew Andre and Kenneth would shoot the car up. The informant would say Andre admitted he shot the car up, but he realized when he walked up to the car, it wasn't a Main Street member. Yeah, it must be people be telling all this stuff, bro. Like, nigga, you can't go down with nobody, nigga, like, nigga. You can't have nobody go down for you nowadays, man. Nowadays, everybody wanna shoot Everybody wants a chance they going down. They wanna take you down with them. Oh God. That shit crazy, bro. This game's all fucked up now. And let's keep going. Andre would admit he shot it up anyway, even after he knew it wasn't a main street. And Jared was innocent, but he didn't care. Andre would be the only one charged in the shooting, and he received life. March 6, 2014. Douglas was walking on 97 in Main Street. A gold Mercury stopped near him, and two men would jump out shooting at him. He would lose his life. A woman would see the whole thing watching from her home. She would scream, and two men would shoot at her as well, but she would not be harmed. Another neighbor would see both shootings, and he would later testify in court. Patrick and Desmond would later be picked up for the shooting. They were from Hoover. They would get caught off the two witnesses that were on 97 in Maine, and also them telling too many people what happened in the crime. A member of their set would tell on them as well. Also, their cell phone being in the area of the crime. They had no chance of beating this case. Patrick would receive. 72 years to life, and Desmond was sentenced to 161 years to life. This will conclude this episode. Yeah. You know what to do. All them buttons, like, comment, subscribe. And notification bell. Whatever it is. But we're going to keep it moving. Too. Um, Alright, y'all just have a nice day, bro.